Hey, Daz, maybe it's time to get back on the mic, buddy, buddy. All right, people, let's do this one last time. My name is Daz, and for almost 11 years to the dot, I was the classic Pikmin guy. I'm pretty sure you guys know the rest. You see, I said my theories uploaded weekly, had that Umibozu thing with Davo Gato, he's the real theorist here. Made some more Pikmin uploads and then some other stuff, maybe a little too much. I tried out being a Let's Player, went to university, then like four years passed, blah blah blah. I joined a comedy sketch show, that's still doing really well. Discovered movie content and switched up my whole career to that. I moved to Brighton, dabbled in external Pikmin stuff, and now we're here. Are you up for the job? Will you be able to save Olimar and the other Rescue Corps members? Pikmin 4 is here in just 44 days. And we're not getting a direct about it. We've got three mini videos left. The one that just dropped, one about partners, Pikmin and Ochi, and some final tips here. Which I imagine is probably the launch video of some basic mechanics. You know, use yellow Pikmin to throw higher. Really groundbreaking stuff. Now the news that dropped on the surface was a one minute micro update about custom characters and a story overview. Interestingly, there are multiple versions with small differences. In America, it's Venture Forth, Brave Explorer, but in the UK, it's The Hero Is You. I can't translate the Japanese one. But all three do come with a different tone of narrator. The American is... This is the intrepid explorer, Captain Olimar. Cheesy confidence man. Whilst the UK narrator is... The intrepid Captain Olimar is stranded and awaiting assistance. A lot more pulled back and factual. The Japanese narrator goes for a mix of the two. Dramatic but quiet. It's the first detail I noticed and no one else seemed to delve into it. But I imagine it all comes down to marketing strategies. That UK narrator is the go-to vibe for all Nintendo adverts over here. And I guess confident cheese just resonates well in the US. Cool. But anyway, the crux of this video is of course what the title says up top. What if Pikmin 4 takes place after the bad ending of Pikmin 1? I know, I know, it's literally a theory I've been spouting for years, right from the very start. But there's some decent evidence this time around, some suspicious details added in that didn't need to be added in. Unless this was the case. <laughs> Pikmin 4 is a stark change to the usual presentation of the Pikmin universe, right? It's a bit of a shock to the system for the super loyal of us in the fandom. Suddenly we're not post-apocalyptic, we're actual home invaders. Human existence is clear. Suddenly we have a new member of the team in an actual Pikminified dog. Ochi for our protagonist and fingers crossed we'll spot Bulby over in Olimar's company. It's inconsistent, like the lore of this game is changing with every new installment as Miyamoto loves his recurring simplistic plot lines for a focus on gameplay, as well as the fact that Nintendo are just trying to market this series better. It underperforms by their standards, but it's being held up as best it can. Especially with Miyamoto spouting it as his passion project and already announcing several sequels- No, Miyamoto, don't do this to us again! But these changes are here to try to sell the game better, and I'm fine with that. I can handle the chibi robo vibes if it means more Pikmin in people's hands. I could certainly see the appeal. But with the lore switching out so often, the planet itself never having a consistent set of continents between games, this time we've just gone full on Smash Bros Earthbound logo design. Perhaps it is most logical for a full reset. This is a reboot of a Pikmin world, so perhaps following the sequel timeline of events just doesn't work out. In fact, all of the elements of the story in regard to Olimar that have been told all can be linked back to Pikmin 1. Only. Listen to this. Is stranded and awaiting assistance. Okay, classic. He's almost always stranded. America, you have any insights? After receiving his distress signal... Ah, so there's a distress signal. This perhaps sounds like Pikmin 3, sure. Except, in that game, a distress signal was only received once on the planet. This is an interplanetary signal. And where have we heard that in the history of Pikmin? Inside of the interstellar radio. Or just space radio in the Japanese version. A ship part from Pikmin 1 that comes with a description as follows. 
I've found my interstellar radio. Not only does it emit a constant SOS signal, it also broadcasts his voices from space that'll brighten up my moments of boredom. The dolphin, while comfortable, becomes quite a lonely place in the depths of night. This part will send out a daily SOS signal. I have so little time remaining though, that I have no option but to continue my search rather than waiting for a rescue party. Having to collect every part is a bit overwhelming, but I get the impression not all parts are needed to fly the ship. BAM! This could very well be the source of Olimar's distress signal. After all, he's crashed on this planet almost every time. Why now does it require a full-on distress alert? And where did these signals initially go if he canonically sent some out during Pikmin 1? This revelation has a few outcomes off of it. Perhaps Olimar in this version of events has in fact failed. He reaches the bad ending of Pikmin 1 and his signal eventually reaches out to find this rescue call. When our guy and the other six finally confront Captain Olimar on these lands, they come to find the Olimin. Perhaps it's a secret hidden Pikmin type Nintendo is still hiding from us for obvious reasons. Or maybe it's even the final boss itself. What a twist, fighting a corrupted version of Olimar on this cursed crashing lands. That is an option. Going maximum on the fan fiction speculation, but it's possible. Another piece of evidence that suggests this is Pikmin 1 Olimar we're dealing with is in the Donkey Kong Country style animatic visuals. Look at this. This comes from the Japanese Pikmin website. That classic treasure trove of hints, I know it well. Featuring an extra presentation of Captain Olimar and the SS Dolphin, left in tatters and even missing its fin again, the Omega Stabilizer. Now perhaps it's just a reference to how the ship is in the same state again, or this is literally Pikmin 1 Olimar's circumstances again. From this website, some more details are revealed, including the fact that this rescue call specifically responds one month later. Where have we heard a specific one month time frame before? It's the exact same 30 days time limit from Pikmin 1. Meaning the events of Pikmin 1 have already finished by the time the rescue call crash land on the planet. Perhaps Olimin has fully blossomed, or perhaps he's long gone in the first place, happily heading back to his family before being detoured again, making the very rescue mission fruitless in the first place. But on the other hand, here's a look at that Captain Olimar distress signal, and some people have speculated it looks like he's even going a little grey up top there. It could just be the lighting, but that suggests this is later in the timeline, and just another trip on Olimar's timeline of events. With Olimar actually needing help and being available to rescue with the time. Who knows? Would Nintendo keep a semblance of consistency with some old forgotten lore? Or would they just redo the whole thing a fourth time? Regardless of if the planet is meant to be Pangaea by now or not. Now, it falls on a lone rookie to rise to the occasion. Who could it be? Other details we come to learn of the story overview is that the Rescue Corps also have a crash landing of their own and are the stowaways we're collecting on the side. Weird to call them stowaways in that case, but whatever. And our protagonist, according to a rough translation of the Japanese video, is stated to be the lone rookie member left behind at the headquarters, unnamed and unfaced. The website also roughly translates to saying you who received an emergency mission will explore an unexplored planet alone potentially ending a franchise-defining trait of multitasking between captains. You play as the rookie, and the rookie alone. We haven't seen gameplay with anyone else yet, and even the other captains seem to not be attached to your group. Probably the biggest change that'll really split the fanbase in two. We've moved from real-time strategy game to open-world collectathon. What with us collecting crystals, treasures, fruits, stowaways, star bits, rescue ship parts, Pikmin, and hopefully more spicy sprays? Maybe it's more fitting to be that way. Just gunning for grabbing as much as you can. Multiple currencies for different things. And doing it solo spreads out the runtime of it all. It's a choice. Although this tiny shot has them glued to you. Is it just a tiny story event for your first Pikmin or do they stick around later? Anyway, the crux of this update is all about how you can customize your own character. Cool, I'm neutral on it. I don't particularly care for this mechanic. You know, who remembers Sonic Forces gleefully for being able to make an OC? But it's not like we're not getting new steadfast Pikmin characters otherwise to connect to. Shepard and Colin, for example, named after dogs and all. Though we also catch that Shepard is a guy, and now even our female protagonist 
Doesn't have to be. This game's becoming more and more of a sausage fest. With the four body types, Olimar, Louie, Charlie, and Toe. Can you make a female Charlie type? Seems a little limited, you know? But hey, it's marketing to the more general peoples. As long as it brings up the sales. How does this reveal recontextualize that first trader? Let's quickly see. The capsule ship doesn't crash land because the meteor was already hit by the rescue corps. Logical. The others are no longer here for this red Pikmin reveal, and neither is Ochi. Can you decide the order, or is this shot faked as the first red Pikmin? Because Ochi seems pretty mandatory as your first discovery. These four captains can all be boys. Ugh. This guy can be the nerd, or a new number five. And that's really it. Fire speculation round. We'll get another five areas, two captains per area. Rookie and Ochi first, Shepard and Nerd, Tweedledee and Tweedledum, totally not Alf and Colin over there. And then Olimar for the final arena. Classical, but now enlarged. Chrysanthemums have a new family member. Empress Bulblex has been spotted on the surface. Weird, perhaps it's a Piclopedia screenshot. We're back somewhere tropical with this screenshot a la sand belching mere slug. Mittites are back and so will XB. Snagrits exist. Those damn meteor shards are still present on the website background. The Umibozu theory lives on. We're only seeing three Pikmin types together at the same time ever despite four being at the forefront. Maybe it's a new limitation to bring out a different kind of strategy, simplify the gameplay and only allow three at once. Hope the game design is built well enough to allow roots no matter what you choose. That'd be genuinely great. Those vents from before are definitely caves. You can spot one has a completed flag in it. You unlock the rescue core imagery as you go. Would be especially cool if you can randomly choose the order based on your direction. And the full box art does show all eight Pikmin, the purple even interacting with Ochi. So so maybe they're not just separated away to mission mode or bingo battle. Unfortunately, they too disappear while searching for Captain Olimar. More from the website also tells us that these guys are from an entirely new, new planet. Planet Kaguya, possibly named after one of Nintendo's data servers. You got Hokutate, Kopai, PNG404, Kaguya, and our rookie from somewhere else entirely. A special planet probably to fit more into the they can be anything you want kind of vibe. Or apparently it's on Karuta Star, as in the playing card, like they are a literal wild card of a character origin source. This art of them though rocks, I love this. And that is all at least I have to cover for this one minute update of Pikmin news. Does this mean I'm now back for your usually scheduled weekly Pikmin content? No. Not yet. Anyway, thank you so much to Davagato and all the other Pikmin team who have been extracting and translating these website deets on the side. And let me know your thoughts on how this Pikmin 4 is looking to be. Do you hate these major changes? I'm neutral for better game sales. Though at the same time, talking honestly here, I was quite disappointed all things considered by Pikmin 3. I didn't like how watered down the whole thing was with replaced enemies, no Piclopedia and minimal storyline and breakable puzzles. I've learned to hold back on my hype levels from those glory days, but I'll be keeping a cautious but optimistic side eye on Pikmin 4 as it releases in just 44 days from now. I also made a trailer breakdown of the first Pikmin 4 trailer that I'd never uploaded to YouTube, so that'll be coming out later in the week. But for now, <clears throat> My name's been Daz, you didn't really care, and I'll see you all in a little bit. Find out in Pikmin 4.